The 1972 policy also focused heavily on students and their needs. After all, students have needs too. And two, three strong points regarding students were that education up to matric was to be free. Tenth grade. Okay, after that, when you went to college, intermediate and to universities for bachelor's and or, and or master's degrees, you were on your own. Now, all students or all families of students would not be able to afford the tuition fee and sending children away because universities were few and far out and you had to live in hostels which increased the expenses. So the government came in to help in two ways. One, in 1971-72 fiscal year, 20 million rupees were allotted for scholarships for students. If you needed money, if you were interested in education, if you promised to do well, you could apply for, the, for a scholarship and you got a government scholarship, which means you got the money, you paid your fees, got the education, you did not have to pay back. The other thing the government did was it allowed students to get loans from banks, of course under certain conditions, and the loan would be paid back after the student got a job. This is what happens in most of the developed world. That is how young people sponsor their education in the developed world. You get a loan, you write off a loan, there's a contract, of course, and it's all legal. You will be followed, you can't run away, okay? And once you get a job, you then begin to pay back in installments. And when you pay back and the bank gets the money, the bank now has money again to give a loan to other students that need it, and that cycle continues. Good thinking, good foresight, good vision, but again, how was it implemented? How were students explained this? How were banks explained what they were supposed to do? How would banks follow up on students? If I wanted to get a loan in my bachelor's, that was two years. If I wanted to get a loan for my master's, that was two years. So four years I've taken a loan, I'm beginning to work, I may get a job immediately after a year, what happens then? That whole follow-up system needed to be chalked out in detail and given to students, their parents and the banks. After all, the banks were giving the money. Obviously, no bank is going to keep giving money when nothing is coming back. That follow-up piece, I think, was loose and needed to be tightened a bit. A good thing, but I think it also talks a lot about integrity. I did take a loan. I owe the money. I should pay it back. Integrity comes in over here, which is a strong point to consider. In addition to this, traveling facilities, facilities for medical checkup, and book banks were established. Again, three ways in which to help students. Now, traveling, if you were going to a conference, if you were presenting, if you were doing a research, if you were participating in a project somewhere, you needed money to travel, you got a travel grant. If you were sick, we, after all, you need health to be able to study and work hard. And so medical checkups were provided free to students. And if you wanted books, book banks were established. You could get a book on loan, you had to return it, you could get a book on nominal charges for a certain time period, for a semester, year, return the book, and the book bank would continue functioning that way. Welfare committees were set up for students and institutions, and they were allowed to elect members from themselves. So students elected members, senior students from the institutions, and a welfare committee was set up. If students needed certain help at home, in monetary measures, in kind, then the welfare committee met, the welfare committee decided how much help, was the help actually genuine, and how long the help should be given. So a heavy focus on facilitating students in the 1972 policy.